During the process of installing these knees, I actually changed my plan several times, starting out with laminated knees, then knees that fit in between the uh, gunnel and the planking, and then over top. So let's get to it. For the fort knees, I'm actually going to do the laminations. So I've made a simple little pattern here out of some scrap ply that will sit on, you know, flush onto the thwarts themselves, curve up and come under the in whale and get cut flush will drive a screw through there to hold it all together and uh, it would appear that that shape is going to work for pretty much any location whether it's the fore or the uh, center seat or and or port or starboard so now I just need to make up a uh, mold so I can uh, laminate up some thin pieces of wood and let it harden. So off camera I just screwed together a couple of pieces of plywood make it thick enough. I don't want to have the lumber overhanging the edge too much because it tends to uh, not get uh, glued together then. And then I just took my pattern here, made it extra long on both ends. And I'm not, I don't really, doesn't matter to me whether this curve gets pulled right in or not, but as long as we get a natural curve. I cut up some of the scrap uh, mahogany at about an eighth of an inch thick. I have dry bent it and it will work. So now I just need to make sure that my laminations do not stick to the mold. But first you need to find the end of the packing tape. And I'm the only one that ever uses this packing tape so I sh should know better than to just let it go back on the end. And I'll never admit that my eyes are failing so bad with glasses that uh, there's no way I can see the end of that roll anywhere. Oh, wait a minute. I think it's right there. I think I found it. After laminating a couple of the knees up, I actually decided to change my mind on this. I want to go a little more traditional. We're going to go with solid knees. So uh, just going to toss out those uh, laminated knees. They weren't really what I was hoping for. And uh, so I'm just going to use solid mahogany. So let's start all over again. So I've cut a piece of scrap plywood, you know, just a door skin style of stuff. And uh, what I'm going to do, because I need to hold it up, is I'm just going to clamp on a couple of blocks to the bottom edge here. They will form the bottom edge line. Next, I've just taken some scrap pieces of cedar. I could use some door skin as well. I have this all line right now. I, there's two ways of doing this. I can have the knee parallel to the seat frame or flush to the other. Now, if I run it parallel to the seat frame, then the back edge of all of this would have to be slightly beveled. So more common way of doing this is to just actually have it sitting flush to the planking and come off on a bit of an angle. Either way, it's going to look nice. So I'm just taking some hot melt. And I know that the bottom corner of that plywood down there sits would be the bottom edge down on that point there. Now I'm just putting a little sticker to the lap edge. Oh. Now 
I want a second one that's going to be flush underneath the guardrail or the in whale and flush to the top shear plank. With those two marks, I can easily just draw in here where the lap is overlapping. It's sort of just a very small lap there. And if I look down inside, I'm going to mark the thickness of the gap between the planking and the in whale. Then I can take this off and trace it to another piece of board. There's the bottom. Wait, what? Okay, no, sorry, that, that's the bottom there. I know that that point right there is where it touches the sidewall of the planking. So now I just want to, I can remove this because I need to get these thick blocks out of my way. So that will sit, where's my mark, right there. Okay, so there's the bottom. I'm going to take my ruler and draw a point between these two. I'll extend those lines once I move this. Inside here, that's where the top would be. Now I'll draw a line from just slightly inside here. Okay, we take all that out, let's extend our lines. Oh, I just need to know where the top of that was. just clean up some of these lines here. So this line should extend right through there. We cut the notch for the planking. This is going to go up inside between the in whale and the shear plank. And then I'll just roughly kind of give a shape so the knee will come out from here down something like that. So I'm just going to go and cut that out onto the bandsaw to see how it fits. So with that roughly cut out, this should tuck under behind there. The trick is of course to get which angle to start here. So my tongue here that fits up in behind is too thick. Right in there, so I can see that the gap in behind here is much too large. You're getting a full pencil in there, so somewhere kind of went a little wrong. So maybe what I'll do just to clean it up is to glue another piece of wood onto here. That'll give us the, yeah. So it's sitting nicely onto the seat. It's tucking underneath, but I don't like that gap in behind. So I'm gonna glue that onto there. That's where that should go. And there's a bit of a gap on the back side in here. So again, I'm just going to glue another piece on the bottom edge there and that'll give us the proper line for resting on the thwart. So I think that's it. That's ready to be traced out onto mahogany stock and we're going to label this and that this is the uh, port side center seat 
All right, now I gotta go and find some mahogany to make these out of. So I have my four patterns here. The most important lines are gonna be these top, back, and bottom. I will cut them out so they fit in first and then I will figure out what shape I prefer. Probably something like that. These ones are just uh, roughly cut out. And we'll label that. That is the uh, center C starboard or CS. So as much as this edge is a little bit rough, it's pretty straight, I'm going to use that edge to trace out my pattern. You can always sand that edge a little bit. Priority on the pattern here really is to just get this back edge and the bottom edge. Once I get these two uh, faces uh, nicely contacting the boat, then I can determine what shape I want my uh, profile to be. Now I'm going to do a little different here. This is where it is coming up underneath. So I'm going to trace across here. I know that the space and the in whale total an inch. So I come out for an inch. And then somewhat parallel to that line there. I'll come up higher. So this will tuck under, lap into the joints, sit on the thwart. This will sit on the inside face of the uh, in whale. And then I'll just cut my shape afterwards. So off to the bandsaw. So it needs to go in quite a bit, which means uh, trimming this out and this face here, if I can get in, make a mark. I've cut this bottom uh, notch here a bit too deep, <coughs> but that's okay. We can always move it in further as we trim. Now this face here I can just actually sand. Okay, we're getting close now. I've got a bit of a gap up top here, a bit of a gap on the bottom, so just a little bit of shaving off of this uh, here, mostly at the top edge. Okay, I think I'm happy with that fit. Just going to mark on the back side here where the top of the in whale meets up. And then I just use a similar, actually I'll use one from the other side. Oh! Should be a pretty close match there. So we're looking at the same pattern sort of through here. And we'll cut that out. For all the knees, I dry fit them in place, I put some tape down on the thwarts, I mark around so I can figure out where to punch a few holes and come up from the bottom in the seat. I also need to uh, add a screw which is going to go through the uh, in whale into nothing and I want to make it long enough so I'm going to add some more blocking just as I did underneath the uh, orlock blocks. I'm going to put a piece in here and just shape it so this will just jam down inside there, maybe with a little bit of glue. I've just got a couple of scrap pieces from the in whale. I've shaved them a little bit thinner, so these will go into these spaces so I can drive a screw right through and hit solid wood. Don't need a screw showing through the inside there. So, we've got a bit of a taper out. We'll do that first. So after adding a little bit of glue, I'm just going to tap this piece down into there. Taking all the knees out, I've rounded them over with my laminate trimmer, giving them a good sanding. 
And now I'm just putting the first screw in, which will go in through the top into the rail. This will get fit and plugged. But I want to make sure I've got them in the right position here, held in place by this So with that nicely in place, I can just double check my location on my tape down here. I mean, it's as long as we get somewhat on center underneath. I'm going to start by punching a few holes through the top side, where I know, and I'll add two fairly close together, only because uh, with the slope of the boat in there, I may not be able to get a, even a, a stubby screwdriver in there to tighten up those. Then I can flip it over, and I'm going to drill through and do the counter thing. If I was to hold that exactly there, where it's been marked, I should be able to just just kind of make a dent in there. I don't need to drill all the way in. I just need to mark. So I've made my indentations in there. And then I can just drill. So theoretically, I should now be able to just turn this over. until I get the other one in the hole as well. Do that now for the, all the other ends, three other ends here. And then we're ready to install. But all these parts, just like all the others, are made, installed, disassembled, sanded, varnished, and so on. So that all these parts will be ready to go in as a unit later. So with all four done and drilled, they are ready to be installed when the time comes. Now that all the internal parts are in the skiff, it's time to move on to the sailing components. That would be the mast, the tiller, the rudder, and the centerboard. Now this is an area where I did lose some of the uh, video as I pointed out in, in a previous uh, episode. Uh, but I'm just going to recover as much as I can and show you what I can. So let's get to that. So see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.